going to read textbooks about this. You know, I'm done with college. I'm done with that. So, so like, I found it really interesting because I didn't know about, like, I would never go to Taiwan for a medical procedure. Like, I don't mean to come up with I'm just not going to do it. I'm not going to go to Mexico either. Maybe not even Canada. <laughs> but, but it's nice to know like what people are doing in other countries, and I would not have known that. And I laughed out loud and cringed a lot during this play. Like, oh, that's painful. But it's, I just really enjoyed it. I thought it was very okay. entertaining, and I didn't take it as like, oh, well, if it's happening, it's true science. I just thought, wow, she's going out and it's like taking part in these experiments herself, which I would never do. Like, I would never have gone to MRI machine with my house. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I don't doubt that for a second. Thanks. All right, so I didn't even finish the book, but I'm craving these points from my friend. And my friend wanted to know two things. Your One, friend. Why is it, yeah, my friend. Oh, my uh, yeah. Two things. Mike Schmerman. Yeah. <laughs> First off, my friend wanted to know why this book was called Bonk, not Boink. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm on a PA, like, I bought. <laughs> So my friend. But part of the thing is that it's our responsibility to actually say out loud what we like and what we don't like in the safety of just talking to the person you supposedly trust even with your life. So it's rather weird that we expect to read about this stuff in journals and we expect people to have sex and MRIs when we can't even communicate with our partners right at that very instant. <laughs> But my comment is that I think now, compared to 30 years from now, and even March said, um, 30 years ago, 30 years ago, not from now, sorry, ago, we talk about sex a lot more. My mom never talked to me about sex, getting my period, all that. No. How'd you learn? No. Uh, eighth grade, you know. Okay. Why are the girls staring up for so me? I'm not. Well, then the conversation <laughs> began. But even now, my daughter's five, and and it's just a more open society I think and it's it's more comfortable and for me and my friends to talk about it and 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 my husband and I I just think the pendulum is slowly swinging and it's a positive thing but pendulum so swinging not, maybe <laughs> maybe yeah but I think it's great and if we're all more comfortable talking about it and, and getting in touch <laughs> about 30 years ago. <laughs> it, it's really true because, first of all, it was no. I mean, kids did have sex, of course, and I had friends who got pregnant, but you know, you weren't supposed to, it was wrong, you shouldn't do it, and then you get married, and it's supposed to be fun. <laughs> Because you don't talk about it. So I wonder how many people, you know, went through their whole life. Luckily, I got divorced and I had fun. <laughs> she needs a t shirt. She needs that t shirt, okay? And to talk about those things and encourage them, like, like what men are encouraged know? from a very young age to masturbate. It's expected of them. And it's uh, not. No. to do it and women aren't expected 
wanted to talk about it. And I think if that stigma left, then yes, you have more ability to figure it out on your own. Well, in conjunction, we, all of us right here, are society. So why aren't we talking about it? Why do we, we have to come in here? We are. We are, totally. But we're sitting here discussing it. I'm Ellie. I just want to bring up the monkeys one more time. Please. <laughs> Don't think we have less time. What? I mean, the monkeys, they have less time, right? I mean, they're busy. There's a, it's a jungle. <laughs> You should speak more of it. That's fantastic. But, but wasn't it the chimpanzee that has like a seven second average? Remember this? Yeah. We're talking about we monkeys. We're talking about it in the book. They say yeah. it's an evolutionary thing. The greater right. you are, the less likely you are to be attacked. Well, oh yeah, that's what they said because, uh, yeah, you're not going to offend another one. Uh, like, you know, if you quickly do it and get out of there, you won't get beat up or something like that because another monkey's coming really fast. Uh, I, so. When she is touching herself, I'm like, okay, you know, that's fine, but you should maybe go wash your hands or something. But I, I don't, I mean, I don't, maybe I'm a little more progressive, but a lot of parents will tell their kids, oh, don't do that. You know, it's not okay, especially in front of other people. But when their boys are doing that, it's okay. And so, you know, this woman had a really great suggestion, though. She said, if we're going to have the, those standards, they should be equal. So she said, if you're a mom of boys, you should get up in front of the TV and just stand there and uh, pretend like you're adjusting yourself and say, wait, I have a public a service of an announcement. If you boys are going to continue to play with yourselves while we're watching this movie, I'm going to start playing with myself too. See how many of your boys keep playing with themselves. <laughs> I mean, it's, but it is the That's thing that we're cheap. raised with. So I, I think we need to think about, as for those of us who are parents, how we're raising our kids and teaching them about sex and what's appropriate, and I think it should be, it's acceptable to touch yourself, but maybe in private. Okay, hold on a second. Now, um, I'm a neighbor boy, and it's not my mom, but I'm visiting, I'm watching the movie. I'm still playing with myself, because it's better than the movie. If that's what's going to get the other neighbor's mom. I need another PSA, I don't think I have it yet. I don't know. Um, that might work for your own children, but I think that uh, if you involve anyone else, is we're in trouble. about the, this guy came out with this book where he went to Liberty University for a semester. It's Jerry yeah. Falwell's Jerry Falwell. University. There's a campus club called Every Man's Battle that... They're all losing. They call it for chronic masturbators, but I think it's just if you masturbate at all. And it's, it's like uh, Alcoholics Anonymous sort of terminology that they use. The CMers. Yeah. They, and they, they talk about, oh, it's been you know, 11 days since I fell. That's what that's what they call it. And it's, this, it's this really serious. Would you fall on my hand in a bottle of Jergens? Ha, ha, ha.